All right, welcome back, you guys. We're going to take a look at our derivative rules. Here's a little bit of notation for the derivative. So last time we found our derivative, right, f prime of x is usually what we called it, uh, dy dx. So here's another one, the, the derivative of the function y or dy dx. That's the same thing, so the dy dx. You know, sometimes you just have y prime, right, kind of like f prime of x, but y prime is also the derivative of that function y, or you could just have the derivative of f of x. Again, all those notations mean the exact same thing. They all mean the exact same thing, which is the derivative is the limit as h goes to zero of the difference quotient, f of x plus h minus f of x all over x plus h minus x, and of course the x's cancel and you're just left with h on the bottom, right? That's what they all mean so let's take a look at what if we're taking the derivative of a constant like for example let's say we have y equals seven y equals seven we know y equals seven is just that horizontal line at y equals seven right so we know the slope is what zero yeah slope better be zero let's go ahead and actually let's actually prove that for any if the function f of x equals a constant, let's go ahead and prove it for any constant. What's this derivative? Well, the f of x plus h, there's the c, there's no x to plug into, minus the original function, which is a constant. This is all over h, so this just becomes 0 over h, which is 0. So the slope, the derivative of a constant, that's the rule. The derivative of a constant is always zero. So here's our first example here. We have um, if y equals 4 pi e squared. Pi is 3.14, e is 2.718, right? This is just a constant, isn't it? This is just a constant. So y prime or dy dx, the derivative of this is zero. The derivative of any constant is zero. Let's move on to another rule. Let's see if you can take a look at these. If y equals x squared, the derivative ends up being 2x, if you run that definition. If y equals x cubed, the derivative ends up being 3x squared. Let me give you another one in between. If y is x to the fourth, the derivative is 4x cubed. And then I have that last one. If y is x to the fifth, the derivative is 5x to the fourth. So if y equals x to the n, what do you think the derivative is? Yeah, nx to the n minus 1. All right, that's the rule. That's the rule on that. Uh, that's called the power rule listed right there, the power rule. Uh, let, me, let me give you an example of an example of the proof of that, um, um, of the power rule, I think is worth noting. And to kind of exemplify that, I actually have to use an alternative form of the definition of the derivative, which is if I'm finding the derivative at x, and I'm going to name this actually, I'm going to actually name this z, and I'm going to move this z into x. So I'm actually going to take the limit as z goes to x of f of z minus f of x all over z minus x. All right, so I move this down. Here's the derivative. I'm moving it down better, better, better until finally I get f prime of x, right? This is f prime of x. Again, this is just the alternative. Definition instead of using f of x plus h minus f of x all over h, this is the one that works for the power rule. And I'm what I'm going to do is I'm going to show it to you for x cubed. I'm going to use it for x cubed and show you um, how it works for that with the alternative form. So that would be the limit as z goes to x of z cubed minus x cubed all over z minus x. And so if I factor that z cubed minus x cubed, I would have 
z minus x. Remember, this is a cubed minus b cubed, which factors into a minus b, a squared plus ab plus b squared. So it has z squared plus um, <clears throat> zx plus x squared all over z minus x. And then that cancels. And now I can let my z be x. So I have z squared, which becomes x squared, plus z times x, so x times x, plus x squared. So I have x squared plus x squared plus x squared, which is 3 x squared, right? And anyway, so this is actually how the proof runs, except they keep it in generic general form for n uh, x to the n. So again, you want to remember if you have x to the n, the derivative is n x to the n minus 1. So the one that I proved, x to the third, y prime would be 3 x to the 3 minus 1 squared. Right? Or if you have y equals x to the seventh, then its derivative would be 7x to 7 minus 1. And so on, right? So n x to the n minus 1 for n being any real number. N being any real number. All right, so let's some other derivative rules. So the derivative of f of x plus g of x is you just take the derivative first plus the derivative of the second. Same thing with the minus between them. If you have a constant in front, you can just leave uh, the constant there. Let's run through a few of these examples here, starting with our power rule. If y equals x to the 12th, and we're finding the derivative of y, y prime, and a 12 comes in front, x to the 12 minus 1, 11. Again, how nice is this? We don't have to run the definition every time, all right? So much shorter, much shorter. So if I have a constant in front, so y equals 3x to the 4th, I take the derivative. The 3 stays there, and then I take the derivative on that x to the 4th, 4x to the 3rd. So my derivative ends up being 12x to the third. Let's go to this next one, g prime of x. Constant stays there. x to the sixth becomes 6x to the fifth minus, let's talk about the derivative of x for a minute. If I have y equals x, and I'm running the power rule on that, so I'm finding the derivative of that, then the, it's, remember this is x to the 1. That would be 1 x to the 1 minus 1. Well, anything to the 0 power is 1. So the derivative of x is just 1, right, using that power rule. So minus 1 plus, and then what did we say the derivative of the constant was? 0, right? Remember, y equals 3. That's a horizontal line y equals 3 has a slope of 0. Right, we're finding the slope of the tangents here. Well, 3 halves times 6, I got 18 over 2, so I got 9x to the 5th minus 1. There's our g prime of x. Okay. This next one here, I would go ahead and distribute that so that I can use my power rule before I start the problem. So I have 18x squared minus 15x to the 3rd. So dy dx, the derivative of y, y prime is, and now I run it. 18, a constant stays there. Take the derivative of x squared, 2x, now it's to the 1 power. 15 stays there. Run the derivative of x to the third, 3x, now it's to the 2 power. So dy dx ends up being 36x minus... Uh, what is that, 45x squared? Notice this is in radical form on this next one, the fourth root of x. So I would go ahead and put that in exponential notation, and then I'm like, oh yeah, that's x to the n. So I'm going to go ahead and run the power rule. So f prime of x would be one-fourth to the x now i got to go 1 fourth minus 1. Well, that would be 1 fourth minus 4 fourths is a negative 3 
fourths. And ideally, we write that with uh, positive exponents, right? So that'll go down and become x to the 3 fourths on the bottom there. Prime of x. All right, this one I would write in a form that I can use the power rule with it. So I would write this as 2x to the negative 3 before I run that derivative. Constant stays there. Negative 3x to the negative 3 minus 1. Well, that's negative 4. And I could go ahead 2 times negative 3. I got negative 6x to the negative 4. And write that with a positive exponent there. Similarly on this, I'd write that as x to the negative 1. So I could run that power rule on that. So f prime of x. Derivative of x, 1. Here I got negative 1x to the negative 1 minus 1, negative 2. So f prime of x is 1 minus 1 over x squared. Here I've got a common denominator, so I would go ahead and rewrite that. That's 2x, simplify that with that common denominator so I can use my power rule again. So I got 2x minus 3 plus 1 over x. Well, I'm going to write that as x to the negative 1 so that I can write, run my power rule. So here's my function. Now let's go ahead and find its derivative f prime of x equals... 2 stays there. Derivative of x is just a 1. Uh, minus derivative of 3 is 0. Plus negative 1 x. Now it's to the negative 2. So f prime of x ends up being 2 times 1 is 2. And then we got a minus 1 all over x squared. So 2 minus 1 over x squared. Now it's stop right there. Got these in radical notation. So go ahead and put them in exponential notation. So y equals x to the 1 half minus 5x to the negative a half plus the square root of 2. And then we'll find y prime or dy dx, same thing. Run that power rule. 1 half x to the 1 half minus 1. Well, that's negative a half now. Minus 5 stays there. And run the power rule on x to the negative a half. I get negative a half. x to the negative one half minus one. That's a negative three halves there. And derivative of a constant. Derivative of the square root of two would be zero. Let's clean, clean this up. So I got one over two. I got square root of x now because that's x to the negative one half. So that's down at the bottom, x to the one half. Uh, negative five times a negative a half. That's a plus five over 2x to the 3 halves, and then plus 0. And I could go ahead and get a, not, not bad to get a little common denominator here. Both of them have a 2. One of them's got x to the 1 half. The other one's got x to the 3 halves. So i got to give this one more x, right? x to the 1 times x to the 1 half. 1 plus 1 half is 3 halves. Now I have x to the 3 halves on both of those. So i got x plus 5 all over 2x to the 3 halves, or 2x root x, if you want to leave it in radical notation. And there's our dy dx on that. All right, this next one is asking us, where, what point does this have a horizontal tangent? Now, it's a quadratic, so it's a lot trickier not doing it with a quadratic. Pretty easy to kind of see it with a quadratic. You know, if you graph this x squared plus 1, you've got this parabola bumped up 1. And you could probably see it. Oh, yeah, of course. i got a horizontal tangent right there at x equals 0, right? It's right at the vertex. For quadratics, it happens right at the vertex. That's where you have a horizontal tangent. In other words, where your slope is 0. In other words, where your derivative is 0 is what we're saying, right? The derivative, which is the slope of the tangent line. Well, let's do it uh, algebraically. So what we would want to do is the tangent line needs to be horizontal. So we've got to find the slope of the tangent. So if y is x squared plus 1, its derivative 
would be derivative of x squared is 2x, derivative of 1 is 0. And we want the slope to be horizontal, so we know the slope has to be 0, right? Slope of the tangent, the red line, has a slope of 0. And now we just solve that, and it'll tell us the x value for, which, for where this occurs. So we have 0 equals x, x equals 0. That's where you have a horizontal tangent, is where have horizontal tangent. But notice they did ask for the point. Remember, um, it's y equals x squared plus 1. So I've got to plug 0 in and find the point, 0 comma 1. So it's actually the point 0 comma 1. Which, of course, we could see, right? In all reality, do we need calculus to do that? No, right? we got a parabola, so we can figure out where the vertex is, right? But what about for x cubed minus 27x? Well, for this one, yeah. You're going to have to, you're going to have to know, or I'm sorry, you're going to have to, You know, where does this thing have a horizontal? In fact, let me give you a picture of it before I before we do it with the calculus. Let's pull it up here. Zoom out. So it says cubic, and you're like, okay, there, it's going to have one right there, and it's going to have one right there, right? But if you didn't have the graph, how would you know? You wouldn't, right? You can't do that with pre-calc. That's the problem. There's no way to find where that spot is. So back to the calculus. Let's figure out what the derivative is, right? So again, this was like clear up here, clear down here, blah, blah, blah. We're looking for where the slope is horizontal, right? We're looking for those two spots. We're looking for those x values and the accompanying y value. So we go ahead and we say, well, here's our y. Now we can take the derivative. Derivative of x is 1, right? So that's minus 27 times 1. And then we say this derivative has got to be 0. We want the slope of the tangent to be 0. Divide by 3, divide by 3, factor that. Well, I won't divide by 3 here. So we got it at 3 and at negative 3, right? 3 and at negative 3. So here's the 3 over here, and here's the negative 3 one over there, right? And so now we're just plugging it in to find the value. So our y is x cubed minus 27x. Let's plug 3 in. And we get 3 cubed minus 27 times 3. So y of 3 is 27 minus 81. y of 3 is negative 54. So 3, negative 54. There's one of the points. There's 3, negative 54 down there. And then we go ahead and do the other one. y of negative 3, which would be negative 3 cubed minus 27 times negative 3. 27 plus 81, and we get 54. So y of negative 3 is 54. So the other point is negative 3, 54. So that point and that point, those are the points we we're looking for where it had a horizontal tangent line. Again, calculus requires right, to find that, that cubic function. All right, the product rule and the quotient rule. I, I listed it as most textbooks do, but I actually, for the um, product rule, I like to do it um, this way. So I, I say f of x. If I have an f of x times a g of x, it's the derivative of the first times the second plus the first, oops, plus the first, times the derivative of the second. That's how I remember that because it helps me a little bit with the quotient rule because the quotient rule, let me, let's do the quotient rule here. 
quotient rules taking the derivative of a quotient. So you got f of x over g of x. Instead of first and second, it's top and bottom is how I remember this. So this is derivative of the top times the bottom minus top derivative of the bottom all over bottom squared. That's how I remember it at least. Okay, so I do write that a little bit different than your textbook does, just FYI on that. So again, the product, I go derivative of the first times the second plus the first derivative of the second. And then the quotient derivative of the top times the bottom minus top derivative of the bottom over bottom squared. That's how I remember it. So anyways, let's go ahead and take this one, which we have a product here, 6x plus 5 times x cubed minus 2. Now, I know you can FOIL this, and I know you can run it with the power rule, but I want to show that it's the same thing is running the product rule. So um, this is our f of x. This is our g of x, right? So h prime of x would be derivative of the first times the second plus the first derivative of the second. So let's do that. So let's take the derivative of the first one, derivative of the 6x plus 5. Derivative of 6x plus 5 would be, where is this stuff right here? I'm just using the product rule. Derivative of 6 times 1 plus 5. There's the derivative. There's f prime of x, right? And then times g of x. So g of x just stays the same. x cubed minus 2 stays the same. Okay. Plus, now f stays the same. What was our f of x? 6x plus 5. Now we take the derivative of g of x. Well, g of x is x cubed minus 2. So I take the derivative of x cubed, 3x squared minus derivative of the constant 0. Hopefully you can see that there. Okay. So you get 6 plus 5, I get 11 times x cubed minus 2 plus 6x plus 5 times 3x squared. And then we could just distribute that. So we get 11x cubed minus 22, distribute that, plus 18x cubed plus 15x squared. 11 plus 18, let me come over here, h prime of x, 11 plus 18 is uh, 29 x cubed. Then I get the 15 x squared, and then I got minus 22. Bless you. Dude, you guys, I'm so sorry. Derivative of 5 is 0. Ugh. Ugh. Sorry. That's a 6 right there. Oh, for the love. 6x cubed minus 12. Ah, sorry about that. 6 plus 18, 24. And that will be a minus 12. Sorry about that. All right, let's go on to the quotient rule here. So the quotient rule says derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top, derivative of the bottom, bottom squared. Okay. So here we go. Derivative of the top. So I'm taking the derivative of x squared plus 2. That's a 2x plus 0. Don't screw up that 0 like I did on that last problem. Derivative of the top times the bottom. Now the bottom is just a 2x minus 7. Right? There's our g of x. Minus this time. i got a minus here between them. Minus the top. So top stays the same now. Derivative of the bottom. Well, the derivative of the bottom is 2 minus 0. all over bottom squared. So 
for one more time, hopefully you see that. This is f of x on the top. This is g of x on the bottom. So this is derivative of the first. This is just the bottom minus just the top. This is derivative bottom. This is bottom squared, right? So I'm just following that. Now let's just clean it up. I'm going to go ahead and distribute the 2x. So I got to 4x squared minus 14x. And then I'm going to put the minus 2 first. So, and then I'll distribute the minus 2 on that. Combine like terms, 4x squared minus 2x squared, I get 2x squared minus 14x, and then uh, minus 4 all over 2x minus 7y squared. And I would leave it right there. So we've got a product rule here. Remember the product rule? is derivative of first times the second plus the first derivative of the second, right? That's what we're following here. So here we've got, uh, and I'm going to write that as x to the one half times four minus x squared. Again, I know you can distribute it through and I know you can do it that way, but we're going to practice the product rule on this because it will give you the same thing, right? So, derivative of the first would be 1 half x to the 1 half minus 1, negative a half. There's the derivative of the first times the second, leave it alone, plus the first. Now I leave it alone. Derivative of the second one, derivative of 4 is 0, minus derivative of x squared is 2x to the 1. So I got negative 2x right there. So I got 1 over 2 root x. I got 4 minus x squared. I got a square root of x times negative 2x. And let's say we were getting a common denominator on this. So here, let me write it this way. I got 4 minus x squared all over 2 root x. And then um, minus 2x root x. And I'm going to get a common denominator. Right now, this is over 1. So let's give it a 2 root x, 2 root x. Let me take it up here. So I got 4 minus x squared minus 2x root x times 2 root x. This is all over 2 root x. Now I'm going to multiply. So I got uh, the negative 2 times the 2, I got minus 4, I got the x, and then notice the root x times root x, there's another x. So I got 4 minus x squared minus 4x squared, in other words, 4 minus 5x squared, all over 2 root x. I'd leave it right there. All right, let's go ahead and use the product rule again. Here's our f of x. Here's our g of x on this one. So m prime of x will be a derivative of the first. Derivative of, two, of x squared is 2x plus 0 times the second. x plus 5 plus 1 over x plus the first. And then derivative of the second. Well, the derivative of x is 1. Derivative of 5 is 0. And now I'm thinking about this 1 over x. I'm thinking about it like that, x to the negative 1. So I'm taking the derivative of that, which would be negative 1x to the negative 2. Okay. So I have 2x, x plus 5 plus 1 over x. 
I got 1 minus 1 over x squared. Okay, so far so good. Two x over x just gives me two. Let me distribute that. I got an x squared, x squared minus one over x squared. That'd be a negative x squared over x squared, or a minus one. Now let me do the inside. That'd be a plus one, and then I got a minus one over x squared. So those are going to be gone. I got a two x squared and an x squared. I got three x squared. I got a ten x. I got. Uh, plus 2 minus 1 over x squared. So there we are. 3x squared plus 10x plus 2 minus 1 over x squared. There's our derivative. I'll leave it right there. Quotient rule. Top, bottom. So the derivative would be derivative of the top times the bottom minus top. Now I take the derivative of the bottom. Now remember the bottom is, let me write it this way, x to the 1 half minus 1, right? So I'm taking the derivative of that. That would be 1 half x to the 1 half minus 1, negative a half, minus derivative of 1 is 0. And then this is all over the bottom squared. So we've got just do the 1, which doesn't do anything, squared x minus 1, minus x times 1 over 2 root x. This is all over root x minus 1 squared. And I'm going to multiply that. Let me take this over here. Got root x minus 1 minus x over 2 root x. Well, x, x minus 1 half, that'd leave us, remember, x is like square root of x times square root of x, right? So one of the square root of x is cancels. And let me get a common denominator. Right now, these are over 1. So let me get it over. Give it a 2. Give all these a 2. And so I have 2 root x minus 2 minus root x all over 2 all over root x minus 1 squared. Notice I have 2 root x minus root x. So that's a 1 root x minus 2 over 2 all over root x minus 1 squared. So this is this is over 1. Let's multiply it by its reciprocal here so we can get rid of the... So I got root x minus 2 all over 2 root x minus 1 squared. <clears throat> and that's our, uh, what was that, h prime of x. Uh, before I go through the the proof of this derivation of e to the x, I'm going to give it. I'm going to go ahead and give you the rule. <clears throat> Anytime you have the derivative of a to the x, it is the natural log of a times a to the x. Okay. So for example, with this one, which we'll we'll prove here, e to the x. Uh, a being any real number, you guys. Uh, greater than zero. If we take that derivative, we apply it, so we should say that would be the natural log of e, e to the x. Well, the natural log of e is 1, right? ln of e to the 1 is 1. So the derivative of e to the x will end up being e to the x, but it's this rule that it's following, right? Let me do a different one, like derivative of 2 to the x. That would be the natural log of 2 
to the X. All right. Well, let's go through it. Let's prove it. Let's see. Derivative of e to the X. Well, limit H goes to zero. Oops. That'd be e to the x plus h minus e to the x. This is all over h. Let me write that as, you know, this is e to the x times e to the h. That's the same thing as e to the x plus h. Let me factor out an e to the x. So I'd have uh, e to the h minus 1 here. And I'm going to stop right there for just a second. And if you look at this function, if you were to graph that, um, e to the x minus 1 all over x, what you're going to see is you got this hole right there, but it's continuous other than that. And if you notice, the limits agree at... And they're approaching, getting arbitrarily close here to 1. So this part will end up being 1. All right, so let me write it this way. So this is limit h goes to 0 of e to the x times limit h goes to 0 of e to the h minus 1 all over h. So this derivative is 1. So then you just have limit of h goes to 0 of e to the x. Well, that's just e to the x. So it just ends up being e to the x. So there's your proof of that. But again, you're just following that rule. The derivative of a to the x is ln of a, a to the x. That's what you want to remember. Um, so what if, though, what if you don't have just an x up there? And unfortunately, in this section, um, a composite function is introduced and, and not talked about a whole lot and so I like to just introduce what's called the chain rule we're going to do a whole bunch of the chain rule but I think it's very valuable to have that right now and the chain rule says if I have a composite function then the derivative ends up being f prime of g but then you got to run g prime of x okay so, for example, on this one, you, have, you don't have e to the x. We have e to the negative x, right? This is made up of a composite function, right? f, f and g, where f of x is just e to the x, but g of x is negative x, right? The negative x is going into, the negative x is replacing that x. And so when you run when you run this, all right, again, I'm thinking to myself, well, that's g of x right there. It's not it, right? The negative x is going in for x, right? This is a composite function. So when I run this derivative, what I do is I say, okay, my rule is ln of a times a to the x, right? So for, so for this one, it'd be ln of e, and then it'd be e, now we don't have just x, so I, I say e to the negative x. So that's my f prime of g of x part. But then I gotta run the derivative, it's not just x up there, I gotta run the derivative of g, which is the derivative of negative x, which is just a negative one. Well, ln of e is 1, so we got 1, e to the negative x, negative 1. So this is just negative e, negative x. That's a very brief introduction to the chain rule. Like I say, we'll do a bunch with the chain rule, but you do have some problems in here that involve e to something other than just an x, e to a negative x, and so on. Right?
fact, let me do one more here. Let's say I had e to the 2x. If I was running that rule, so this is made up of g of x is 2x, f of x is e to the x. Right? So the derivative would be ln e, f of g of x, which, which is e to the 2x. But then I got to take the derivative of, quote, the inside, if you will. The derivative of 2x is just 2. ln of e is 1, so I got that just ends up being 2e to the 2x. Right? So that's another example of that uh, with the chain rule. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and uh, find a, a y prime for this next one. Um, before I do this, I would write this as um, this is 1 half e to the x minus 1 half e to the negative x. I would probably write it that way first, right? That's a common denominator there, that 2. And then I would go ahead and run my derivative. So y prime would be constant stays there. Derivative of e to the x, ln e, e to the x. Derivative of x is just 1, right? So actually the chain rule is still being applied. It's just that the derivative of x is 1, so it makes no difference. We don't write it. Minus the constant, ln e, e to the negative x. I shouldn't do that very good. There we go. e to the negative x. Derivative of negative x, negative 1. Remember, ln of e is just 1, so I got 1 half times 1 times e to the x minus a half times 1 e to the negative x and a negative 1. So y prime equals 1 half e to the x plus, because I got negative 1 half times negative 1, plus a half e to the negative x. So y prime is, actually I'll just leave it right there. If you want to, you could write that as, This is the same thing, right? E to the negative x would go down there and get to the x. Hopefully you're looking at this now and noticing you got the product rule. So derivative would be derivative of first. So derivative of x squared is 2x times the second. Plus the first stays the same now. And then derivative of e to the x. So the derivative of e to the x is ln of e, e to the x. Of x is 1. Right? So our derivative is 2x e to the x plus x squared e to the x. Remember the natural log of e is just 1. Alright, that's pretty good. I mean, if you want to, or yeah, you could take an e, I'm sorry, an x out and an e to the x out, and you'd be left with. Uh, 2 plus x, or x plus 2. Yeah, either of those, definitely fine on that, right? Well, let's go ahead and use the product rule again here. Derivative of the first, I'd have 18x minus 6 plus 0. Derivative of the first times the second plus the first times derivative of the second, ln of e, e to the x. Derivative of x is just times 1. Remember, natural log of e is just the 1 times uh, e to the x. And if you want to, we could go ahead, we'll go ahead and take an e to the x out. So I'd be left with the 18x minus 6 plus the 9x squared minus 6x plus 2, because I took an e to the x out of both of those terms there.
I got 9x squared, 18x minus 6x, I got a 12x minus 6 plus 2, I got a minus 4 there. I'll stop right there. I'll go ahead and rewrite this. So this is x to the third to the one elevenths. In other words, x to the three elevenths. <clears throat> and now I'd run the derivative. So 3 elevenths x to the 3 elevenths minus 1. Well, 3 elevenths minus 11 elevenths is a minus 8 elevenths. Minus e to the third. Well, that's just a constant. That's 2.718 to the third, right? So derivative constant is 0. Plus x to the e. That's kind of another weird one. x to the e. Well, that's kind of like, it's like if it was x squared. If it was x squared, I'd go 2x to the 2 minus 1, right? Same thing with this, no, number goes down, x to the e minus 1. So e x to the e minus 1. And then I just clean that up. I have 3 over uh, 11 x to the 8 elevenths plus e x to the e minus 1. And I would leave it right there. All right, so we've got quotient rule here. So y prime would be driven to the top. So I have 4 stays there. Uh, ln of e, e to the x. So there's the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top driven to the bottom. So derivative 2x to the fifth, that'd be 10x to the fourth minus 3 ln e e to the x over bottom squared. So we have 4 e to the x, 2x fifth minus 3 e to the x. I'd go ahead and take a 4e to the x out of the top there. And then I'd be left with 2x to the fifth minus 3e to the x minus 1. And I'd have this 10x to the fourth minus 3e to the x. i distribute that. Let's see, so I'd have a let's see. Looks like that one and that one are gone, so I have two X to the fifth minus 10x to the fourth. And I'm going to take out of the 2x to the fifth minus 10x to the fourth. I'm going to go ahead and take an x to the fourth out. I didn't leave myself enough room here. Oh, and a 2. I'm sorry. I'll take a, I'll take a 2 and an x to the fourth out. And I still have 4e to the x as well. So I'll have x minus 5. So 8x to the fourth, e to the x. And that's our, what do we call this, y prime. Definitely did not leave myself enough room there. 
let's get into some higher order derivatives or uh, taking the derivative of a derivative or the derivative of a derivative of a derivative and so on. So if if our original function is f of x, that's just saying take the first derivative, see what you get. This is saying take the derivative of that one. And this is saying take the derivative of that one you just got. And that f to take the, that would be in this case the fourth derivative of that one and so on, right? So let's do an example. Here we would have 12x squared plus 10x plus 3 times 1 plus 0, right? That's our first derivative. Let's take the second derivative. 12 stays there, multiplied by 2x, so I get 24x to the 1 plus 10 times 1 plus 0. There's our second derivative. Let's take our third derivative, 24 times 1 plus 0. Let's go ahead and take our fourth bless you, derivative. Derivative of a constant, bless you, is zero, right? And there would be all the derivatives there. And of course, the subsequent derivatives would also be zero, right? The fifth derivative would be zero, sixth derivative would be zero, and so on. This one just asks us to take it to the third. I would go ahead, instead of using the quotient rule, since I don't have to use the quotient rule, let's not use it since I don't have to, because it's a little quicker not to. So here's our original function, x squared plus 2x minus x to the negative 1. Notice I wrote it so that I could just run the power rule every time here. Here's the first derivative, 2x plus 2 uh, minus negative 1x to the negative 2. So the first derivative is 2x plus 2 plus 1 over x squared. There's our first derivative derivative and you could also write that as here's our first derivative 2x plus 2 plus x to the negative 2 I write it that way so I can take the second derivative right so let's go ahead let's go up here and now go let's take the second derivative derivative of 2x is 2 derivative of a constant is 0 and then we have negative 2x to the negative 3 so the second derivative is 2 minus 2 over x to the third. In other words, 2 minus 2x to the negative 3 in order that we can take the third derivative, which is the one we want. Now let's take the third derivative. Derivative of 2 is 0 minus the constant stays there times the derivative of x to the negative 3, which is negative 3x to the negative 3 minus 1, negative 4. So this third derivative is 6 over x to the fourth, 6x to the negative 4. I'll do something similar for this one. i go ahead and rewrite that before I run this. Otherwise, you're running a quotient rule with a product rule, and it's quite a mess. I mean, you get, you get there, don't get me wrong, but uh, <clears throat> yeah, I wouldn't do it. So I have x cubed minus 2 times x squared plus 5. This is all over that 5x to the 4th. So let me rewrite that. That's, and I'm going to foil this. i got x to the 5th. 5x cubed minus 2x squared minus 10. This is all over 5x to the 4th. Let me rewrite that. That's each of those over 5x to the 4th. So I have, in other words, x to the 5th over 5x to the 4th. So this is 1 uh, 5th x. That's uh, x to the negative 1. I got a minus 2 fifths x to the negative 2, and I get a minus 2x to the negative 4. Now we're talking, and I can take that derivative, right? So let's go ahead and take that first derivative. First derivative would be constant stays there. Derivative of x is just a 1. 
plus take the derivative of x to the negative 1. Negative 1, x to the negative 2. Minus constant stays there. Derivative of x to the negative 2. Negative 2, x to the negative 3. Minus 2, derivative of x to the negative 4. Negative 4, x to the negative 5. So our first derivative is 1 fifth. And I'm going to leave it in this uh, with the negative exponent so that I can go ahead and, and take the second derivative because I'm wanting to get to that second derivative. Again, if I was punching it in right now for the first derivative, I would write that as 1 fifth minus 1 over x squared plus 4 over 5x to the third plus 8 over x to the fifth, right? Write it with the positive exponent. So let's go ahead and take the second derivative now because it's in a nice form to do that. Derivative of 1 fifth is 0 minus derivative of x to the negative 2, negative 2x to the negative 3 plus 4 fifths, negative 3x to the negative 4 plus 8, negative 5x, and negative 6. So the second derivative ends up being 2 over x cubed. Uh, what is that? Minus 12 over 5x to the fourth, uh, minus 40 over x to the sixth. There's the second derivative. All right, last one here. Let's go ahead and use the product rule. And I'm going to think about this as there's my first one, there's my second one. So thinking about that, there's my f of x, there's my g of x right there. Okay. So my first derivative would be derivative of the first times the second uh, plus the first. Derivative of the second. Well, the derivative of the second one is ln e e to the negative x, but I don't have I don't have just an x up there. I have negative x, so I got to take that derivative of the negative x. That's negative one. And this, and then I'll just clean this up. So I got uh, 12x squared e to the negative x. Remember, ln of e is just a one, so I got a minus 4x cubed e to the negative x. Okay. Um, another way you could write that, so there's your first derivative, is you could take a 4 out, you can take an x squared out, you can take a negative e to the negative x out of each of these terms, and you'd be left with 3 minus x, right? That's the same thing. Let me put it over here. All right, now we're wanting to do the second derivative, so I'm going to erase that. Let's do it right below it. Second derivative, so that's here's how you write the second derivative when you're using that notation there. And I'm going to go derivative of the first. So I'm going to use the product rule there. Derivative of the first, 24x times the second plus the first. Derivative of the second, ln e e negative x negative 1 minus and then I'm going to do the product rule over here so I'm thinking about it as that so derivative 4x cubed is 12x squared derivative first times the second plus the first derivative of the second Um, notice these are like terms. Uh, 
our second derivative. Let's see, we could take a 4x and an e to the negative x. Oops, that's not supposed to work right there. And I'd be left with 6. And I'd be left with minus 4x. Minus 6x, sorry. And then an x squared. So there's another form of that second derivative. There's the second derivative. All right. Hopefully that gives you a bunch of different examples to look at. Appreciate you taking notes and working hard. See you next time.